Hello everybody, it is me, Abris Katuzzi, and today we're here talking about that time I got reincarnated as a slime episode 19. Okay, so I read volume 8, and pretty much this whole entire episode is pretty much the beginning and ending of volume 8, which is kind of funny, because I was wondering what was happening last episode, so then last episode and this episode are pretty much all of volume 8, and uh, a question that I was having before was just like, I was wondering if they were ever going to show what exactly happened to Phobia, like how did like how did Phobia get taken over as a vessel, vessel and stuff like that, but they don't show it. They just don't show it in the manga, they didn't show it in the anime, who knows if they even talked about it in the light novel, like, they did, like no scene whatsoever, I guess he just got took control over like right away. And then uh, it was kind of uh, funny and adorable seeing Milam multiple times throughout the episode during the battle against uh, Charvis. How she just kept on begging Ramiro to, get, to like have her like fight it. But then Ramiro kept on saying, no, what are you doing here? You should just leave. And like later later on in the episode, like before the middle part of the episode, before she comes in to like attack it, she's sleeping. She's just like, she's, she was so bored that she just fell asleep. I liked the, the battle tactics that were going on. There was a lot of just planning and stuff like that. How Benny Mara was like leader of stuff, like Hakuro's leader of stuff, Gapta's leader of stuff, and then Hakuro apparently is I guess the leader of Gapta's group because 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 apparently he just isn't that good of a leader. I guess he is like he is like sort of powerful, but I did look at the wiki of uh, of Gapta, of the fandom wiki of it, and then I saw a, an ability that he gets in the future and it was just like a very like i was like wow that's a very uh, interesting ability that i saw him use in the future you know that i you know, i'm swelling myself somewhat i was reading like a whole bunch of stuff in the wiki that i have no idea about it just seems like a cool and interesting for the future events but uh to be honest the megadalons in the sky i i like i might need to check the manga again but when i was looking at them in the manga they look kind of cool but they actually look like sharks and this like man like it's good that, that like everything else is like is like pure just like animation based and not CGI but man those sharks just look terrible to me like they look somewhat good but it's good that that they're the only things that stand out or else because like good thing that the orcs were animated clearly instead of them being CGI like they were in the past but they they were fine it, it was kind of cool the way it looked I I like the way it looked in the manga a little bit better cuz they were like roundish and they actually looked like sharks instead of looking like a bunch of pointy things and at least uh, Charvis didn't look CGI as much he looked actually fully animated the whole entire time which is kind of cool and we saw Shion slice like one straight in half and apparently Ranga can fly in the sky they didn't even mention that even in the manga I remember seeing Ranga flying in the sky and like even in this they mentioned it in the manga they didn't mention it it's weird seeing him fly like he just got that ability out of nowhere I guess it's because a lot I guess because they're ranking up with Ramiro so then they just end up getting multiple abilities out of nowhere and then we saw Hakuro fight off against a shark, and he just sliced it, diced it, like, instantly, just into pure dust. Not a lot, not a lot of stuff happened, because the first 15 minutes of this episode was just them in an all-out battle, just trying to defeat him. Like, like as they're, like, as before Milam joins the fight, uh, Ramiro uh, suggests that they only did, like, 30% damage to him. And then even, like, I really enjoyed the Great Sage parts. Like, that was in more detail in the manga, but they were just saying how he has high regeneration. He can just like, regenerate, like, instantly from, like, anything. And it, and it takes him, like, a while, like, in the manga, it mentioned that, that them, when they did the all-out attack in the ending, where, like, Benny Mario was telling everyone to attack it while Ramiro was fighting it, in the manga, apparently that took 10 hours. It took 10 hours for them to damage Charibus to thir only 30%. Like, man, that, that that's, like, a very powerful beast. And, like, this is, like, supposed to be, like, a bunch of, like, dust and magicals that, that like, fl like f just, f like, poofed off of Veldora. Like, man, Veldora se seems super strong, but then when you see how how uh, strong Ramiro is, is like, 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 wow. Like, the power differences in characters are just really weird and strange. There's a part that they also showed where it showed, uh, after they defeated, like, all the sharks and stuff like that, they showed Soe, Shion, and Ranga fight off against Charibus. That wasn't shown in the manga. Maybe it happened in the light novel, but it was cool seeing them try to defeat it. But then you saw the scale part. To be honest, in the, because, of, because it's just picture by picture in the manga it was cool seeing the scales because they talked about it in the manga about the scales flying around but seeing it actually animated having all the scales fly around and then hitting them and then scratching them stuff like that and you saw uh, Ramiro come in and uses his gluttony ability I actually really like it how the, they didn't really t they didn't really tell you I think in the in the anime they didn't really tell you in this episode I'm pretty sure but but Ramiro fused his his star his uh his uh what was it his predator ability with the orc lord starved ability and then fused it together into a new skill called gluttony and then he's able to like like uh, attach attack things a lot easier and melt things and stuff like that and be able to eat them a lot easier in a different way 
But uh, it was cool seeing it. But it is weird to seeing it just being it, just uh, just seeing dust fly around and then gather around them and then eat them up really quickly. And when when he was when even when he used the scales again against Milam, it was kind of cool seeing Milam come in and then like he, she's able to stop time. Like that didn't that didn't even happen in the manga. In the manga, she just used her late. He, she just used her Drago Buster like instantly in the manga. But it was cool seeing her stop, like stop like the time on those attacks and have them fly down. She's she's like Neo from the Matrix. She just stops bullets. <laughs> She's really powerful there because she is like the oldest demon lord. So I guess that makes sense. And she used her Drago boot, boot Buster and then just attacked Charibus and then defeated it instantly. Like, damn, just, just instantly. Even in the manga, it's just like, wow. Like, that, like I had to say that audibly when I finished that earlier when I was reading the manga. But then you saw how uh, you saw just you saw Phobia just fly out really instantly, just flying away. And then he just falls. And then as he's falling, Ramiro picks him up and says, oh, I got you. Because he wanted Milam to hold back a little bit, even though that she pretty much just made it so that impossible for Sherbis to regenerate like at all. And then after that, I guess uh, they're done. They defeated him like instantly. Like the, all they needed was Milam's help. But then. But then uh, Shuna had to get in the way, and Shion had to get in the way last episode. But the, this episode was pretty cool. The music was weird sometimes with the events that happened, but the music was overall pretty good. The animation was pretty good. The CGI about the sharks were just still weird to me, and I think they, it looked bad. Even though in ways people could think that it looks cool, I could see that part if people thought that it looked okay. But overall, that was what happened. We saw how... Uh, King Gazelle had sent in Pegasus Knights to help them and stuff like that, which is a cool moment. And they talked about the senior and junior thing, which they mentioned like in other episodes. Or maybe I just mentioned that because they mentioned that in the manga during the, the peace treaty. Overall, it was pretty good. I enjoyed the first the first 15 minutes of this episode, and uh, I can't wait for the rest of it, even though that I sort of know what happens. But I really enjoyed this episode so far. And uh, yeah, I'll be back in a few minutes to review the rest of this. Okay, I am back. One thing that I forgot to mention in earlier parts of the review was that uh, there was a part, there was a scene where, like, a giant shark came in, and then the new orc lord, like, guy, uh, Geld, was able to, like, hold off the shark with just his hands. The shark whipped his tail and then, like, killed, uh, not, like, killed, just hurt all of, like, the other orcs. And it was pretty cool seeing Gabiru come in with his vortex, like, spear, like, trident thing, and then he just comes in and then slashes it right on his head, and he's just dead instantly. Like, man, that scene was awesome. Another thing that they showed is that Milam had a cape out of nowhere when she came to help Ramiru. She got a cape. Now, in the manga, she had that cape, like, during the start of the battle, but it was weird how she just had a cape show up out of nowhere just just to show people, just, to, I guess, to show the viewers that they're following the manga slightly. Like, like that cape just comes out of nowhere. I guess it just she just has, like, a power to just materialize stuff out of nowhere. After the scene, they showed uh, Ramiru like healing, like healing uh, Charbis off of, off of uh, Phobia. Now in the manga, they they explicitly tell you what happens, but in the anime, they didn't tell you. But like like they said how Ramiru and the Great Sage were working together in order to save and also heal Charbis, or just like take Charbis off of his chest because you saw it like 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 sp like sponging like a parasite off of him. Now I was wondering this because they didn't mention it in the manga like whatsoever. But like, what happened to Charbis? Like, did did, did Ramiro eat Charbis and then like like eat him like 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 how he did like the Orc Lord? Because I'm really wondering what happened with that. Because because if he's never like, is he going to reappear again? Like, is he going to reappear again? But I'm pretty sure that in the manga they mentioned that Ramiro did the oper like did like the healing operation on Phobia because he wanted Charbis to never be like returned again so if people in the comments can tell me what's going on there like like did he eat him and he got his magic holes or something like that or did something else happen because we're really wondering what happened to Travis because I know that phobia is healed but but uh after that was done phobia woke up and then and then like they were all getting ready to attack phobia in case he was being like all hostile again but instead he was being very thankful and he was just like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I didn't mean to do any of this but it's really a, a different personality than he was before but when, the, one of the things I talked about last episode was how he has like a very like confusing personality to me because he's because like he seems very logical but at the same time he's very prideful but then he has like like a very like uh aggressive personality but at the same time as you saw in this episode he's very like he's very nice if he's able to be uh i think they might show it next episode unless they skip over it but but they, in the manga they showed how phobia is very nice towards ramiro after he saved his life and stuff like that he's like like uh he's he's just like uh i don't i want you to like not think badly of lord carry on i want you to just kill me on the spot because of how like bad i've been and then ramiro's just like nope it's okay you you're, you've uh you've done enough you should just go home and he's like huh <laughs> He's being all weird about it, and then after that, Ramiro's just like, you can just leave. I'm pretty sure that Milam is okay with you leaving, too. And then Milam's just like, I would punch you and beat you up, but I'm mature now. <laughs> That's really funny, seeing Milam act like that. She didn't even, she didn't say that in the manga, but seeing it in the anime is pretty funny, seeing her, like, seeing her, like, uh, act all 
act all high minded because of like her like because of learning from Amiru and the people around him and changing a little bit. The ending of the mangas, there's little short stories where you can listen to Valdora's thoughts on everything because he's alive inside his body. He can listen. He like sees everything that he's saying. And there's a scene where he's just like, where like he like watches Milam the whole entire time. He's like, why is my daughter always like this? Or like no niece. Why is my niece always like this? Not daughter, niece. After that, they. Uh, the the Dryads, the Dryads, Trainee and her sister, I've already forgot the sister's name. Uh they were telling uh they were talking to uh Phobia and asking him where where they found a Cherubis and then he's just like, Oh, a cl- I met these clowns and then they like showed like a the scene as it directly from the manga because I remember it, they like draw uh Laplace's face and then he's just like, I never seen that guy's face but I but there was a girl and a dude and then uh you saw Benny Marr recognize the dude because that's the dude that attacked with the orcs to his village and killed everyone. So and you saw how he's just like, I'll remember that guy's name because he's gonna like probably like really hurt that guy. But I, in the comments someone said that that all the clowns are like or like I think I think he said all the clowns maybe just one of them or two of them are as strong as Clayman or like sort of on the same level. So I guess like Benny Marr would have a hard time facing off against a demon lord. So then, unless he gets stronger in the future. So then they all figured out about the Harlequin Alliance. Yeah, everyone knows what's up to speed. And then uh, Mila mentioned that apparently she's just like, the only person I know that's able to, to do schemes like this is Clayman. And then they showed a scene, they might show it next episode, where there's a scene where at the ending of Volume 8, they showed they showed Clayman, like, uh, they might show it next episode, but they showed Clayman, like, being like, you know, like, it went all according to my plan. I knew that Demon Lord Milam would defeat Phobia and Charmis, like, like what 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 kind of like what kind of, what kind of like schemes is this guy planning to just think ahead that far ahead to know to know that you know the same thing with the orc lord it's like he it's like he wanted the orc lord to be defeated but then he knew that charbus would be defeated like what's even going on with him and, the, and those clowns it just seems weird what they're playing and then you saw how uh, apparently milam sensed that carrion was around so then demon lord carrion showed up he's actually pretty cool i really enjoyed him him and uh there's the guy in the first opening with like red hair, like another demon with red hair. I think those two look very similar, even though that one has blonde hair and is a little bit smaller. When you saw the the red haired guy, he also has sharp teeth and he seems like a beast type too, almost unless he is a different type. But they also mentioned something. I think at the ending of Volume Eight, they mentioned something, but they didn't show it here. But then they all just uh, uh, and then Ramiro, uh once he saw Lord Carrion, uh, Carrion looked to Ramiro and then was just like, "Oh, so you're the one. You're the masked." Uh, person that defeated the Orc Lord, and I like it how it's it's even funnier in the manga because he's like like uh, trying to antagonize Carry On a little bit, and it's just like, what, do you want to avenge him? And then he's just, he just in the manga he laughs at Ramiro, but it, but he just uh, does like a little like grin and stuff like that, and it makes like a little noise in the in the anime. But in the manga he like laughs at him, and then like he like says that he likes Ramiro and stuff like that. So then he. Uh, says that he won't cause trouble anymore and the Ramiro says that he wants to like form a pact with his with his like uh city and stuff like that so then they agree to it and then I like I find it funny how he like he like tr- after he like uh like reconciles with uh Ramiro and stuff like that uh, carry on looks over at Phobia and is like Phobia, and then he just says yes, sir. And then he like smashes him into the floor. And then you see him, you see him pick up Phobia, and Phobia's just like, like, uh, like bleeding all over. And you see how the monkey dude was there with Carry on. He's like, oh my god, wh- what did you do to him? It's like Phobia. What's? And then you see him just bleeding, and then he's like, oh, see you later, Ramiro. And then he just teleports away. Like it's really weird how, especially like you saw how the the clown the girl clown tear she's able to just teleport randomly and teleport into the floor and stuff like that like then I guess demon lords can just teleport just instantly uh, then the episode ended with them just like uh, having the battle over and stuff like that but in the in the volume uh, man, this is just a little spoilers it's not really a spoiler because like the like it says it says in the next episode it, sh- it showed like a person's name the next episode's titled Yuki Kurazaki I have no idea who this is but if it's going off of what I saw in the last page of volume eight so maybe something cool is going to happen, but uh, I really enjoyed uh, this episode. It was pretty cool, especially how I did look ahead a little bit when I read Volume 8, but uh, I don't really have Volume 9 because I haven't read that far because I've been buying the volumes, and I don't really look at it online because I don't want to spoil myself too much, but I might. But uh, yeah, this episode was pretty good. I enjoyed the, 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 the rest of this episode, just finishing up Volume 8. If you've uh, enjoyed this review uh, slash my thoughts and uh, discussion on this episode, then leave a like. If you didn't enjoy this whatsoever, then leave a dislike. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video, and uh, yeah, bye. See you next week.